Hey everyone, this is Dr. Calkins. Today I'm going to talk about week one, chapter one, uh, what is chemistry. This is our first chapter of the first test. It's the first chapter of 16 total chapters that we cover in intro chem. Uh, it's really just an icebreaker chapter to give you an idea of the kind of content that you're going to see in this course. So let's go ahead and get started. One thing that we have to worry about in this chapter is the definition of chemistry. Chemistry is the topic of the course. Chemistry is really just thinking about matter and how it changes. So when matter uh, changes, it's going to have two different types, chemical and physical, so we'll talk about examples of those. But just matter itself is made up of lots of things, and we need to be able to describe or have a process to describe uh, how we can classify matter into several different types. Other than that, there's a little bit of scientific method uh, in this chapter, uh, and then that's about it for this icebreaker chapter. So as we look at a course, uh, any course that you take in college, you have to figure out your motivation for being there. Maybe it's to get into the nursing program. Maybe it's just to check off a box for your um, degree. Oftentimes, for most courses that you take, though, it is a requirement. So anytime it's a requirement, it's going to be something that requires us to kind of tune out. Because you're being forced to take this class, it's like being forced to clean your room. You don't want to do it. And because you don't want to do it, you want to cut corners, whether it's paying off your brother or sister to clean it for you, or in our case for chemistry class, whether it's Googling all the answers or checking Chig, um, you know, weekly for the answers or borrowing some old homeworks from a previous student. Those are the kinds of things we want to uh, avoid so that a course like this doesn't have to be as difficult as you might think. So hopefully we can give you better reasons for being here than you have to. Maybe it's understanding things around you. Um, turns out to be uh, pretty fun in many cases. So chemistry is a part of science. Science is you know, a pretty broad spectrum. But one thing about science is it's changing. Whether we like it or not, science is changing. We get better cell phones, you know, better internet, uh, better spaceships, better cars, you know, electric cars, those kinds of things. And it's all because of science that this is changing. So one of the things that uh, causes change is the want for new things. You want something to be better, to be faster, to uh, make your life a little bit easier. And those are the kinds of things that science has done for us. We just take it for granted when we go to the store and buy those kinds of items. So when we think of science, science is really about the how, the why, so when you think about science, it's, you know, it's how can I go to my neighbor's house without uh, riding my horse? So somebody probably thought of that and said, well, let's make something out of a machine that has wheels that can be powered by things other than an animal. So then you get cars with horsepower, so to speak. So that idea of science of how or why, those are usually just questions that people have to make their lives easier, to make them their lives better to make their lives more efficient. So the major difference between science and technology then is technology uses those uh, outcomes and applies it to some kind of application. So the idea that you can put a fossil fuel inside of an engine and blow it up and turn pistons that turn a crankshaft, that turn an axle, that turn a tire, uh, those are all ideas that came from science um, and engineering and so forth. So technology is really just giving it scientific idea or uh, concept, an application so that you can uh, purchase it and use it. When we think about science, we have to wonder, is it always right? Well, the problem with science is it's only as good as the scientists. And scientists are human and they make mistakes. Uh, sometimes they don't have the right kinds of ethics. Sometimes they um, you know, just read a number wrong. Uh, but in any case, it's really a matter of if science is always right, that means that no mistakes could ever happen, and that's never really going to happen ever. So you can imagine that if you have a cure for, say, cancer, great, but it may not cure everybody with cancer. Maybe cure, you know, help cure a few. So a lot of times with pharmaceuticals, what you have is this idea that is it better to cure millions of people at the expense of killing, you know, dozens, hundreds, thousands of people? You know, that's a tough call. Uh, but definitely saving lives is a good thing. If it's the expense of losing lives, you know, that's the trade-off. That's the 
you know, where science could still get better. Maybe we can have less a percentage of death out of some certain drugs or side effects from them. When you think about technology being good, really that depends on the person. Because if you're, you know, a social media lover, then maybe seeing grandma on Facebook is better than seeing her in real life. Who knows? But that's the idea of where technology can be good. It makes you see grandma every day if you want by checking her Facebook status or Instagram or whatever. Maybe sending her a snap. Who knows? Uh, but the idea of that is really dependent on the person. Technology is helping us lead more efficient lives, although it is distancing us from social interaction face-to-face, -face, which is maybe not such a good thing, um, but you can be the better one to decide that. Mostly what I'm looking for out of this course for you guys that are watching this video or that are taking it in class or both is to just show you things that you see in the news, help you better understand what you're seeing and why you're seeing it so that we can be better members of society. So really this is just what we're after, to be more knowledgeable of science as a whole Intro Chem helps us because we cover 16 chapters over 16 weeks. So chemistry is the course that we're taking. It's really the central science and we can pat ourselves on the back as chemists um, because it's a central science because all other sciences need us in order to really have a job or a career or something to do. So the reason we call ourselves the central science is because Chemistry is all about atoms. That's the smallest part of the universe that we know of, although there are subatomic particles that we'll talk about in our second chapter. But without atoms that can combine together to make cells, to make organisms, there is no biology. Without atoms that have movement, there's no way to calculate them. There's no way to understand physics. So without atoms, we really don't have anything to study. So chemistry is really the first in probably the most prominent area of science. Uh, the other ones are just there to uh, branch out from chemistry and to better understand atoms and how they move and how they wiggle, as is the case with uh, biology. So in our uh, next video, what we're gonna show you is chemistry and it's two definitions and better understand the types of matter and the types of changes. And we'll see you uh, next time.